everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. Uh, just a quick check in here. I've actually got a clear night and I'm imaging. It's uh, the first night in, I think, 43 days that it's actually been uh, clear enough and uh, not too windy uh, to image. So I was really excited to get out there and at least get a few hours in tonight. Uh, we're looking like some clouds are coming in uh, pretty quickly here, but um, yeah, at least got a few hours in. Uh, you can see my view on the ASI Air uh, currently looking at the Cone Nebula and uh, the Christmas tree cluster. This is um, uh, kind of an ongoing project, still a little bit under wraps, uh, not for the, the target itself, but uh, for what all is involved. But I was happy to get some data on that. Uh, but with clouds coming in, I did want to uh, check in on a cool feature that is on the ASI Air. Uh, it's currently still an experimental feature. But it was something I was pretty intrigued about, and uh, this is my my first chance to uh, to really check it out. So I wanted to uh, kind of walk you through uh, what I found. So this is the all sky polar alignment, and you can find this uh, assuming you're upgraded to uh, the current version of ASI Air. You can see my uh, my version number here. This is in the I menu here, and you see the experimental feature selection here. We're going to go to all sky polar align. So it's currently turned off, but you can then turn it on and give it a try. And uh, if you like it, you don't like it, whatever, maybe it doesn't work for you, uh, you can always uh, turn it off. So let's give it a look. We're going to turn it on here and we're going to go into, we can stop this exposure here. We're going to go into polar alignment. And right here, you can see it's a slightly different set of instructions here. You want to set the, uh, the Mount RA axis to northward uh, slash southward. So that, that's essentially where my scope is now. You can see it's obviously pointed more southerly toward the Cone Nebula and the Christmas tree cluster. Uh, however, the RA axis is aligned with north. I've already done polar alignment. I've been going here for a few hours. And so uh, it is set to north. So check on number one. Uh, connect the main camera mount. Obviously, that's already done. And now, point the scope at the visible sky except east and west. So this is essentially saying you can point it north or south. You just don't want to be pointing it uh, towards the east or the west. And I believe that's because of the, the way it does this. It's going to take an image, slew the telescope a bit, take another image, and then slew it some more. And you run into some issues. You could potentially have it running into the mount uh, if you have it uh, pointed towards the east or the west. So I think I'll be in a pretty good location here. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna hit the play button in order to uh, start. All right, so it's taking the first image and then we can see the mount is going to slew over. I think it's going about 15 degrees with each time. And we'll see where it gets to there. Take a second image. And nice and quick on the plate solves. It'll take a third image over here. All right, so it's plate solving on that third image. It's going to do some fancy math. And there we have it. So it's saying it's nine minutes and 57 arc seconds off. So 957. Now, I had done that polar alignment earlier. And I was uh, quite close. I was uh, only about 20 arc seconds off, which I thought was pretty good. Um, so this is showing it's a little bit further off. Now, based on some of the chatter that I've seen about this feature, uh, it isn't uh, quite as accurate as a standard polar alignment with the Polaris in view, which makes sense. Uh, but with a little bit of tweaking of the algorithm here, I think you could really kind of get it zeroed in. And this is a really a fantastic feature. If you don't have a clear view of Polaris from your uh, imaging uh, setup, or potentially for me, I've got a nice clear view of the northern sky generally, but some of the objects that don't get very high in the south, uh, for instance, something like the Helix Nebula, or uh, perhaps Thor's Helmet, something like that, those are a big challenge for me. I have to back myself up out of the sidewalk, uh, kind of behind the scope, potentially, and that kind of gets into the trees a little bit. Maybe Polaris wouldn't be as visible. So that uh, could be an option for me if uh, if I wanted to chase some of those objects that are a little bit lower on the horizon towards the south. Uh, that might be an option 
uh, that I could uh, experiment with. So overall, a great feature here uh, with the ASI Air. It's uh, still experimental, so uh, not a full release on this yet, but uh, certainly something I'm looking forward to playing around with, assuming I continue to get uh, a few clear skies in order to uh, try it. So I'm curious to know in the comments, have you tried this out? Is this something that uh, you've had success with? Uh, is there another feature, perhaps, that you're looking for from, uh, from ZWO? Uh, for your ASI Air. As always, if you found this useful, definitely give it a like so others are able to find it as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies. We'll see you next time.